video I'm going to share just a few tips about how to stay well if you're worried about your mental health during the coronavirus outbreak um, and these are generally applicable ideas that you can use for yourself or someone that you're concerned about and they are mainly good for kids, adults, anyone. So the first thing is routine. Um, one of the things that is likely to happen as things stop running, um, if you're in a country with school closures or perhaps you've been asked to work from home, is that the normal things that we do each day aren't happening in quite the way that they normally would. Now we know about issues like anxiety and depression, that routine is one of the things that really helps to keep them at bay. Getting up, um, getting out, talking, to people doing the same things each day can be really helpful and, and protect us from anxiety and depression. If we're going to be staying at home, self-isolating or working from home, then that routine might fall by the wayside. So we need to create new routine. And as part of that new routine, be thinking also about your self-care. So I'd be thinking about things like looking after yourself, um, getting up, getting clean, getting dressed, even if you're not going to leave the house. Um, I would also be thinking about um, food and diet and trying to get a somewhat balanced diet. They're appreciating that if this goes on for a long time, then our options might become more limited and to be forgiving of ourselves for that. Um, and then also to think about sleep as well. Sleep is really important. So exercising good self-care. The other thing I'd just include within that kind of routine and self-care thing is if you are somebody who takes medication, think early that you're able to make sure that your stock of that medication won't be interrupted. So plan ahead for that one. The next thing that I would think that you need to really think carefully about to keep yourselves well, um, particularly if we end up uh, going more into self-isolation and doing more social distancing, is considering how to stay connected with people. We're really lucky that we live in a world where we can be hyper-connected, even at a time where we might all be confined to home. So think about how you can strengthen some of your connections online um, and whether you can be using things like WhatsApp or social media, for example, to be reaching out to people so that you do not feel completely isolated even if you are having to physically isolate. You might be someone who doesn't usually use social media so much or the online technologies, this might be a really great time to learn. My next suggestion is that we need to take time out from the worry. So it's a really difficult time, but one of the things that we're seeing is people constantly refreshing their newsfeed and always looking for more information about the coronavirus and how many people are affected, how many deaths are being, what's going to happen next, and it's a constant source of worry. And that's a really difficult thing to deal with. So actually, if every now and then you're able to say to yourself, I'm going to stop refreshing, I'm going to allow myself to think about something completely different and try and find something that you can do mindfully and really lose yourself in that task instead. I would encourage you if you can actually to turn off your devices, um, to unhook yourself uh, from uh, kind of news sources and so on and actually just get, get lost in something that you know that you can enjoy for a few moments. Just give yourself a chance to reset a little bit. Of course we want to know what's going to happen but this constant refreshing, constant checking, constant worrying um, is something that can really really build our anxiety um, and feed into to, to kind of low mood and worry and things as well. So giving yourself time off from the worry, really, really helpful. Next, we can look to kind of somewhat control our fears, our worries and our concerns using the if then strategy that I've talked about in other videos. Um, and this is actually by kind of getting all our worries out, writing them all down, making a list of them, and then thinking for each of those worries in turn, well, if this happens, then what will I do? Thinking which are the things that we can control, thinking which are the things that we might need to accept that we perhaps can't control, and actually trying to understand which of those are real risks or not. It's really difficult times, and who knows exactly what's going to happen, but we can be thinking carefully about what are the things I can do something about? We've all got lots of if-thens going around in our head, but remember, if you can catch it and name it, then you're in a position to potentially tame it. So name those worries and consider, if this does happen, then what will I do next? Finally, I would encourage you to think, if you can, beyond the here and now and try to make some positive plans for the future. We don't know exactly how long this is going to go on for, we don't exactly know what the consequences are going to be, but if we get very lost in the difficulties that we're facing right now or the, the challenges that we might be facing in the coming weeks, then we're more likely to get very bogged down by it, to feel very stressed, very anxious, very low as a result. It might be really nice to think about things that you might do in six months time or a 
year's time, plan for the future. Remember that there will be a time beyond this and think about the things that you might enjoy then. I hope this helps a little bit. I don't have all the answers. We're having to learn together here. If you've got ideas, things that are working for you, for your loved ones, for those that you're caring for or supporting, until next time, bye.